In this section of our video series linking aviation to the concepts of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, we will be introducing you to the main forces that impact the flight of an aircraft. In subsequent lessons, we will be providing more in-depth information on each of these forces, how they are produced, what they are dependent upon, and how they impact flight. As with any object, an aircraft obeys the basic rules of motion as described by Sir Isaac Newton in 1686. In this lesson, we are going to examine the motion of an aircraft in terms of the forces that act on it in accordance with Newton's laws of motion. Newton's first law states that every object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change its motion by the action of an external force. The key point here is that if there is no external net force acting on an object or if all of the external forces cancel each other out, then the object will maintain a constant velocity. If that velocity is zero, then the object will remain at rest. If an aircraft is sitting on the ground, that does not mean that there are no forces acting upon it. The weight of the aircraft is always present. Weight, as you will see in the lesson on weight, is a force directed toward the center of the earth. That force is equal to the product of the mass of the object and the acceleration of gravity on that object at that location. Weight, then, is a force acting on the aircraft pushing it downward. The fact that the aircraft is not moving indicates that there is another force, equal to the force of weight, but acting in an opposite or upward direction. That force is provided by the Earth itself. According to Newton's first law of motion, because the forces cancel each other out, there is no change in velocity, and the aircraft sits in one place. An aircraft in flight requires us to look at forces a bit differently. An aircraft in flight does not have an upward force provided by the Earth to balance the downward force of weight. The upward force is now provided by the wings in the form of a separate force called lift. To produce lift, however, it is necessary for the aircraft to have forward motion. This forward motion is produced by a third force called thrust. As the aircraft moves forward to produce lift, it also feels resistance to that movement by the air that is moving through. This resistance to motion through air is a force that we call drag. We will look at weight, lift, thrust, and drag in detail in future lessons. Applying Newton's first law of motion to these four forces, we can see how it applies to an aircraft in motion. If the lifting force is equal to the downward force of weight, the aircraft will maintain a constant altitude. If the thrust force is equal to the force of drag, then the aircraft will move at a constant velocity. Newton's second law of motion explains how the velocity of an object changes when it is subject to an unbalanced external force. The law defines the force to be equal to the change in momentum or mass times velocity per unit of time. When a force or unbalanced forces acts on an aircraft, the aircraft accelerates in the direction of the force or the largest force applied. In other words, a force will cause a change in velocity. And likewise, a change in velocity will generate a force. This would explain the concept of g-forces in a high-performance aircraft or why, when you turn a corner in a car, you feel like you are being pushed away from the turn. Going back to our four forces as they follow the second law, we can see how we can change the direction and or velocity of an aircraft. If the lifting or upward force produced by the wings is larger than the force of weight of the aircraft, the aircraft accelerates upward or climbs. If the lifting force is less than the force of weight, the aircraft accelerates downward or descends. If the thrust force produced by the engine is larger than the force of drag, the aircraft accelerates forward or speeds up. If the thrust force is less than the drag force, 
the aircraft slows. Unfortunately, if the thrust force is reduced and the forward velocity decreases, so does the lifting force. If I slow the aircraft down, I must make some other changes to the aircraft or it will start to lose altitude. We will discuss these changes in the section covering flight surfaces and controls. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action in nature there is an equal and opposite reaction. In other words, if object A exerts a force on object B, then object B also exerts an equal force on object A. Notice that the forces are exerted on different objects. For an aircraft, one of those objects is the air through which the aircraft moves. The third law can be used to explain the generation of lift by wings and the production of thrust by a propeller or by a jet engine. These concepts will be explored in the lesson dealing with lift and thrust forces. The forces impacting the flight of an aircraft obey the scientific laws that you study in school. Producing an aircraft that will be able to withstand these forces and move through the air enters the areas of technology, mathematics, and engineering. In the other lessons in this section, we will be discussing in detail the forces affecting flight, weight, lift, drag, and thrust.